If you've been watching Blender videos on YouTube for a while now, you might have seen CG Geek's video about running Blender on an old crappy laptop. He used a six-year-old system with a four-core, four-thread CPU running between 2 and 2.4 GHz and 5 gigs of usable system RAM. Today, I'm going to be significantly outdoing that by creating something on a 15-year-old 1.6 GHz single-core 32-bit system with only 1 gig of DDR system RAM. If his computer was a potato, then this computer is a moldy, rotten, if not mostly decomposed potato. This computer won't run the latest version of Blender, so I went back to the archive and tried just about every version of Blender from newest to oldest until I found a version that worked. Welcome to Blender 2.65. Thankfully, this version is new enough that it has the Cycles Render Engine and the Overhaul UI. These features alone put it miles ahead of some of those older versions. Oh. Now before beginning, I think it's worth setting expectations. This machine won't run the classic BMW benchmark, but I ran some other benchmarks compared to other hardware and concluded that if it could run the BMW benchmark, it would take about four hours to complete, which means it takes about 240 times longer to render than a GTX 1080 Ti and about 40 times longer than an Intel i3-10100. So considering that, I think it's best to avoid trying to render an animation and just stick to rendering a single image and a simple one at that. Therefore, I'm gonna try making a desktop wallpaper. Not only am I running Blender on this machine, I'm also doing the screen recording on this machine. So the performance is gonna be uh, not very great to say the least. All right, I'm gonna start out by selecting the camera and zeroing out the location. I guess I'll delete this light too, probably don't need it. Well, I will need a light later, but you know, whatever. I'm gonna zero out the rotation as well, and then we'll move it up on the z-axis. The background itself is gonna be a plane. I'll scale it up to fill the view of the camera. Okay, so I'm gonna select the plane, go into edit mode, and subdivide it several times. That's not bad, but I'm gonna scale down the image because I wanna have more boxes within the camera's view. Now, go down to the face select mode and try that again, extrude individual. And now, going the wrong way. Ooh, where's my performance? Oh wait. Now we have a bunch of individual boxes. So I'm gonna do something clever here. I'm gonna enable the proportional editing and then go here to the fall off and go to random. Now, if I select one of these and move it on the Z axis, if, let's say I wanna move it down and I s <laughs> use the scroll wheel to uh, increase the area, we get this interesting effect where it selects other vertices and moves them proportionally with it yet randomly at the same time. This tool is also useful, you know, in smooth mode to generate smoother transitions between surfaces. But in this case, we're gonna stick with random because, you know, it's gonna look cool this way. The geometry here is going to be a little bit weird, but uh, let's just add a few lights and see what this looks like. Now we'll go into the camera view, and for the sake of time, I will reduce the samples on the preview down to two. The shadows are a little bit gray, and that's because the world is just set to gray. So we'll go there and change that to black. So now I'm gonna try to add my logo to the scene. Well, I don't want it to be that big right in the middle. So I'm gonna scale it down. I'm also gonna take this opportunity to scale the background down a bit. Something like that. We'll see what that looks like. Okay, colors. Not a huge fan. Not a huge fan of the colors at all. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, so. Not a huge fan of everything that's going on here. Okay, okay. 
That's, uh, hmm. I think something that's probably worth doing, because the way that uh, I created this pattern here, there's actually some, I don't know what you'd call it, incorrect geometry. And I think that can be fixed simply by adding the triangulate modifier, unless this totally ruins it. Nope. That's cool. We'll render this again and see how that looks. Okay, that's pretty cool. Not super sold on the colors. I kind of want to go a little bit more pastel or a little bit darker. Yeah. Now the logo, still not entirely sold. Don't like how it kind of washes itself out. I'm kind of thinking going with the subtle logo might be kind of cool. Although it needs some light on it. Okay, that's pretty good. Obviously not a final quality render, but uh, I kind of like what we're seeing here. Something that I want to try though, I want to try seeing if I can make the background look a little bit more like acoustic treatment foam. Okay, that is pretty cool. Still too much saturation on the light, but we are definitely getting there. That's pretty cool. I'm, I'm gonna settle with that. Now it's just time to do a full resolution render. And we'll see how long that's gonna take. I'm pretty happy with the result, especially considering that it took me less than 30 minutes to make on a 15 year old computer. Just for fun, I tried rendering this on my GTX 1070 and it only took 26 seconds. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing.